Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how the curves command gives you precise control over tones in your image. I'm going to move on to this image of the flower in a minute, but first of all I'm just going to create a new image by going to File, New. Let's just use a standard preset and let's just rotate it to Landscape. And I'm just going to draw a gradient from black to white on this new image. So I'm going to choose the circular gradient style and then just drag out from the center to create a white to black gradient like that. Now I'm going to access my layers panel by going to Window Layers to bring that up. And I'm going to be using Adjustment Layers to apply my curve settings. You could apply curves directly to your image layers by going to Image Adjustments Curves or using the keyboard shortcut Command or Control and M. But applying curves as an adjustment layer gives you greater control to fine tune the effect whenever you like. So I'm going to click the Create Adjustment Layer icon here at the bottom of the Layers panel and choose Curves from the list of adjustments there. And that pops my Properties panel with the Curve settings inside. Now we'll look at all of this information around the box in a minute. But first of all, let's just focus on this central area here where we have this square box with a diagonal line running th through it. Now we can click on this diagonal line and then drag it up or down to lighten or darken the tones in the image. And you can see how that affects the gradient that I've just drawn. In fact, let's just turn off my layers panel for now so we can see the image more clearly. So an upwards drag will brighten tones and a downwards drag will darken them. But the great thing about curves is we can add more than one of these points along our curve line. And the best way to illustrate this is if I add a few more points up here to anchor that line in place. Let's just add a couple more points down here. And then I can add a point down here and drag it up or down. And you'll see how I can target and adjust the darkest tones in the image. And you'll see how that affects the tones around the edge there without making any changes to the central area where our brighter tones sit. And this is because the tonal range within the curves box is represented along the x-axis here where we have the darkest point on the left and the whitest point on the right. And this is reflected in the input and output values here at the bottom of the box. The input value shows us the part of the tonal range that we're adjusting and the output value shows us the adjustment we're making. So if I just click on this point and then drag it up, you can see how the input stays the same and we're targeting the tones that sit at 64 along the range from black to white and we're adjusting those tones that originally were at 64 to now sit at 88 or you know, as I continue to drag upwards you can see how they now sit at 113. So that's how you can use curves to make precise adjustments to different parts of the tonal range and I can just drag those points off the curve box to remove them. I can also use points along the line to anchor it in place while I adjust a certain part of the range. And to illustrate this, I'm going to toggle this icon on, which allows me to click over the image to place my point. So you can see as I hover over the image, it shows me where the tones are sitting along the tonal range. So I'm just going to click inwards from the corner there and you'll see how that allows me to position different points along the tonal range and then once I've placed a few points I can perhaps target this point here and drag it down and you'll see how that allows me to change that specific part of the tonal range while keeping the rest of the range unaffected and let's just drag those points off again I can also adjust the white and black points by using these two sliders here at the bottom of the box. I can drag those inwards to set new white and black points. So just by dragging inwards, I'm dramatically boosting the contrast. So we now have very little detail in this central area and in the corners. I can hold Alt while I drag to give me a view of any clipped pixels just like that. And if I like, I can even set new colors for my black and white points by double clicking on these eyedroppers here. So if I double click on the black point eyedropper and then I'm gonna set a blue tone and hit okay. I don't want to save it. And then if I click on the blacks there, that will reset them to blue. And I can do the same by double clicking on the white point eyedropper and we'll set a red tone for the whites. 
and then we can click on the central area and you'll see how we can remap different colors onto parts of the tonal range. And I've just undone that. Now I can also target and adjust colors by using the RGB drop down here. So I can select different color channels and then drag the curve line. So on the red channel here, I can drag upwards to add red and drag down to add cyan. And as before, I can make more than one point. So I can perhaps add red in the shadow areas and then drag down in the highlights to add cyan in the highlights. And you can see how that's working where we're getting red shadows and cyan highlights. Let's just drag those points off and I'll show you how we can change the green channel to add either green or magenta. And again, we can perhaps add magenta in the shadows and green in the highlights to create that kind of effect. And with the blue channel, we can either add blue or yellow. Now this pencil icon here allows me to draw my own curve line so I can darken down the shadows and brighten up the midtones just by drawing my own line. Then I can use this icon here to smooth out that line. And if I want, I can go back to my anchor points and tweak them however I like. Let's just remove those points again. Now let's move on to this image here of the flower and I'm going to show you how to use curves to improve the tones and give us a much nicer result. So I'm going to add my curves as an adjustment layer again. And first of all, I'm going to go to the red channel and you'll see if I drag down on this top point here, what I'm doing is making the lightest tones slightly more cyan and less red. And then I'm going to drag down over here You'll see how we're able to reduce the reds in the highlights. I'm, I'm going to pin the reds back down here in the shadows and midtones. So I'm only reducing reds in the brightest areas of the image, which is this half of the tonal range. Next, I'm going to move on to the blue channel. And again, I'm going to drag the blue point, the top point here down slightly, and this will add a touch of yellow into the highlights and then I'm going to pin the rest of the blue line back into place, just like that. Then I'm going to move on to the green channel and I'd like to add some green into the shadow tones and hopefully that will give me a more intensely green stalk here. So once again, I'm going to toggle this icon on and then I'm going to click on the stalk here and you'll see that allows me to set a point along my curve line. Let's just toggle that icon back off and then I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to adjust that point. So I'm going to bring that up but then I'm going to pin the rest of the line back into place. You'll see how that allows me to add some green into those shadow tones. And then finally I'm going to go back to my RGB channel and just make a simple S-shaped curve like that to boost the overall contrast. I think my image is looking much improved. Let's just toggle that layer on and off. So there we have it. That's a brief introduction to the fantastic curves command. Thanks for watching.